Techlab Insight is our free tool that we launched two years ago. And basically what we found is that people were saying, we don't want to invest in Techlab structures, all we want to do is take the model and use the model and, and take the information that's within that model. So we launched something called Techlab Insight a number of years ago. And basically from the model that George has given us, we can just say publish to Techlab Insight, really easy. And then we bring that in and then I can actually view that particular project. Now it's not just looking at the Techlab information, it's looking at all the different reference files that George worked with as well. So the files that come in from the civil guys are sat within this particular project as well. And what you'll see on the left hand side of the screen now are all those different files that you've worked with and they're just loading up. So this takes a few minutes to just load up. And once we've done that, we've got DWG files in there, it could be IFC files, it could be DGN files. Tecla, Tecla BIMSite version 1.9 which is launched today I believe. It's also going to bring in then things from SketchUp, so you can bring in SketchUp objects in there. We've got IGIS files, step files, whatever you want to name. It's not just about Tecla files. Okay, so we can bring objects in from lots of different disciplines. And if I just pick up the model, we've made this really intuitive, really simple to use, just using the mouse or you can use the controls up here. You can pick the model up and spin it around, so there we can see we identify that particular um, model that we're working on. Look at the reference models, you can see highlighted is a control line geometry, just brought in as a DWG file. So we're using all the project data within here, and this could be shared with a contractor or a client, not using technical structures, but using technical <coughs> insight to start to see this information a little bit further. We can switch those off really easy. So we just go back to George's Tecla bridge. We can rotate that around. We can make things transparent so we want to see inside. In this case, we've got reinforcement in there as well. So again, really nice and simple way of actually viewing all that information in one, in one particular platform. We could take this a little bit further and we could do conflict chicken. So we can actually do clash detection in here and bear in mind that this is free. So you can do full clash detection between the Tecla model and the civil model. You could do clash detection between the rebar within here. So we want to check it. And again, this is at no cost for the contractor who's working on this particular project. Giving a real clear understanding as to how this project goes together. We can create a rule. We could take some of these objects. I'm sure you're okay with me to have I do this, George. Yeah. Do a clash check. Let's see what we get. <laughs> So let's just take two portions of it, let's take the girders and the button and the headstock. We can set a clearance, we can set a minimum distance if we want to do interface checking as well. We can make sure we've got a clearance around particular elements. We can save it and then we just run it and this is where George climbs under the chair. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> it's done the class check and zero clashes. So you're okay George in that case, we pick the ones away. So we're doing that full class detection there. If we've got any conflicts, they would appear on this right hand side. We can sort them, we can group them, we can find them very easily. But the key to this is that we can also create comments and notes as well. And we can send that back to George who's using the Tecla Structures model. And he can import that note back into Tecla Structures and find that particular exact location. So again, we're not relying on somebody marking up 2D drawings on the construction site to say, we've got a problem here. We can do it through the model, we can visualise it a lot easier. So we could actually go into a particular area like that. We could create a note, save those comments in there. This could come in, come in from me. We can make it private between yourself, so it's just a record, or you can actually make that public and share that with other project team members as well. And we can just write a description in there and say, clash occurs or whatever we need to. And then we can just keep that link, save that note. But the key to that is also traceability within the model as well, because all these notes are linked to it. We're not relying upon email systems, it's in the model. So at any point, if anybody else is working in the model, they can find this particular note, they can click on the view, and it takes them to that location. So we're not trying to rely on referencing to say it's the blue beam that's on the left hand side that's halfway down this grid line that's at this particular height. Refer back to the view and it takes you straight in there. If I just change the visibility back. We can also make comments and notes. We can highlight them. So I could go back into there. You can see it changes the transparency back as well. If I wanted to make some markup or comments, let's just pick this particular element. We can do a markup. Pick a particular face, we could do a red line on there, we could type some comments and notes to it, we could say this is another view. So now we've got another view, another note, you can see the red line appears, and we could say something like finish required. So we wanted to communicate this with other people. Excuse my typing. There we go, and we can save that note again. So now we're starting to build up a library of different comments and notes we can work with. We can send that back out and we can share that then. So we can send it as an email to somebody else using Tecla BIM site can then import that note and comment to it. Or more importantly, we can then save to a particular project location as well. 
So then anybody else opens that particular project in Tech of Insight, they see those notes and comments all stored away. And they can also reply. So we could take this comment and we could send a reply back saying, clash, no, well, there isn't, as an example. So again, the traceability of those comments are within the model as well. Rather than it being an email, a note, a sketch, a fax, if I dare say so, we're actually doing it all, all within the actual model. We get a list of all the objects, as I mentioned before, and the information that's coming through from it, so we can see the columns. We can look at the columns, we can find the column in the model. And we can say, show just me that column. Column is. There it is. So we can just find particular elements within the model quickly and easily that are referenced. Turn everything back on again. We can take all the columns and let's just show those. So anything that's been modelled with a name of column, we can get that coming through. We could look at the rebar and we could look at the diameters of the rebars. We could find which rebar we want. So find me all the 24 diameter rebars and just show those as an example. Just similar to what George was doing within his model, but this is now allowing other people. Um, other trades to start using the model really easily. There you can see we've got all the reference models. So again, not just the Tekla objects that are coming through. We turn off the Tekla parts and just look at the reference members. So there's the reference models again. Let's turn off the Tekla elements. Let's maybe do some clipping, just like you saw George do within Tekla structures. We can also do that within the model as well. So just clipping so we can start to see underneath the bridge, around the bridge, really easy way of manipulating the view and again we can save that then as, as views as well so we can create <coughs> save views, we can save, save comments, save notes what I'm going to do just to finalise there is turn everything back on again just remove the clips, surface reference models so even, even as a sales tool we can start to use what you see down at the bottom which are these saved views so we can look at different elements and we can spin around and find them very quickly and it remembers the settings, so in terms of which files were turned on, which elements were on and off. But now what I can actually do is send this out to my client. And this might be a structure, this might be a building. Send this to the architect and say, is this what you want? Tying those views together to create that animation. And bear in mind that this is free. So a lot of power within Tecla BIM site to allow you to do it. And the reason why we did this is because we want people to start sharing more and more models. But people need to see the benefit of the model, and this is what you can see here. This is a very quick example that I created earlier. The other thing I can do in here is, as well as notes and conflicts and comments, I can also save documents. So I can include some of the PDF documents that George mentioned before. So here's just one of your PDFs that I took from the model folder. Again, you can include that, you can link it to the objects within the model. Here you can see I can link it to selected elements. So if I want to convey part of a specification as an example, I've got a bearing or something like that, I could link that to the model. So somebody can open the model up and, and directly pull those together. We've got the drawings, DWGs, etc, etc. And I've just included in there my PowerPoint at the end, just to bring things to a close. So I can double click on that, it launches with whatever the application I'm using, in this case PowerPoint. 